Greetings everyone, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today we're going to take a look at another more, well, I shouldn't say recent, they've been around now for 25 years, right? But they're more of a modern day progressive rock band from Sweden, started up by a veteran of the progressive rock scene of Sweden in the 70s. We're talking about Royna Stoltz, the Flower Kings, former guitar player, vocalist with Kaipa, okay, who were a pretty popular prog man on the Swedish scene back in the, the mid-late 70s. Okay, he has had a couple solo albums throughout the 80s, early 90s. In 1993, he released a solo album called The Flower King, all right, with a very cool song, self-titled, same as the album, right? We believe in the light, we believe in love, every precious little thing. We believe you can still surrender, you can serve the Flower King. A great song, which led to the formation of the band The Flower Kings. All right. A very cool band that has been pretty prolific since they debuted with their first album in 1995. Again, followed two years after Stolt put together his solo band and decided to turn that solo band into the Flower Kings, named after the album and song of the same name. A band that uh, you know takes a lot of influence from Yes, obviously. There's a, you listen to the music of the Flower Kings, a lot of long epic songs, a lot of kind of bombastic uh, musical explorations and heavy Rickenbacker bass or Fender bass and tons of keyboards, Hammond organ, Moog synthesizer, Mellotrons, all sorts of stuff. Okay, high pitched vocals. It's kind of in the yes frame. Okay, yes style. Very melodic. 15, 20, 30 minute long tracks, right? But lots of really great harmonies. All right, really good melodies. A very, very cool band that uh, over the course of 13 studio albums, none of these are duds by any means. It's kind of like this is a very similar thing to like Spock's Beard's show from yesterday. Uh, same amount of albums. They were contemporaries, okay, U.S., Sweden, but a very solid catalog. And again, there are some albums that are better than others, but all of these are pretty enjoyable. You know, my only one issue I've ever really had with the Flower Kings is that a lot of their albums are really long. I mean, they've released a whole bunch of double albums. They've got so many, like 15, 20, 25 minute long tracks and things like that. You know, if you if you don't have the patience for that sort of thing, these guys might be a little bit too much for you. But the music is so spectacular. I've seen them live a couple times. I've met a bunch of the guys in the band. They're really sweet dudes. The music is really good. I've enjoyed them for a long time. I continue to like them and, and follow their music. So a band worth seeking out if you haven't. So if you're one of these people who's come to this video and you never heard the Flower Kings, instead of posting something saying, who, or I never heard of these guys before, Watch the video, go listen to some songs, and then come back and say, you know what, I never, heard, I never heard of these guys before, but based on this video, I went and checked out a couple songs, I dug it, or I didn't like it. Okay? That's, I mean, that's cool. Do a little bit of homework. Just do a little bit of homework. Instead of just saying you never heard of them before, go listen to a song or two. Take 10, 15 minutes, 5 minutes. Go listen to a couple tracks. I'm telling you. Investigate some new stuff, people. All right? They've been around for a long time now, so they're not a, you know, they may not be a household uh, name, but uh, they've been around a long time, and most people who are into, been into progressive music for the last, like, 25, 30 years know full well who the Flower Kings are. All right, so coming in at number 13, I'm going to go with 2004's Adam and Eve. Again, solid album. A lot of cool album covers on here, too. Uh, solid album. Uh, one of the things I do like about this album, it's a shorter album for them. Uh, it's not probably not the most memorable album for them. You know, you got uh, you got a 19 minute track to kick it all off with a lo uh, Love Supreme. All right, Cosmic Circus is fun. There's a lot of other short tracks on here. Timelines is a good tune. Uh, the Blade of Cain, you know, solid record. Not one of their best, but a solid record. 2006's Paradox Hotel is going to come in at number 12 for me. Again, we're back to, you know, if you take a look on the back, you got double disc set here, 
lot of material, a lot of songs. Uh, this, you know, right around this time is where I started to get a little fatigued by some of the Flower Kings albums because while they are really good, it's just like, man, so much music. It's like, you know, when you're, you know, especially like around this time, so 2006, you know, early on in the 2000s, you know, I'm running a webzine, you know, with 15, 20 writers around the world. And we're trying, you know, we got record labels and bands sending us new releases to review nonstop. I mean, that's what we were doing at the time. And it's like, you know, when you got, you know, two or three hundred per writer, uh, new CD releases to review a year and digest, right? And then you get a, you know, like a near two hour long Spock's, I mean, uh, Flower King's CD to review. It's just like, oh, man. So enjoyable, yes. Um, a little overblown, yeah, a little bit. But still, a solid record from them. Uh, same thing with 2013's Desolation Rose, which I do not have. Okay, there's a couple of them that I just I reviewed uh, digitally, never just didn't go bother to go buy them, right? Desolation Rose, a uh, very cool album. Great album cover if you want to go check it out uh, online. It's very, very cool. But again, yeah, that's one of their ones that's a little more compact. Uh, again, maybe not as memorable material as some of their other albums, but still very strong. Uh, what else we got here? Number 10, 2007's The Sum of No Evil. A lot of their album covers are very kind of almost like psychedelic late 60s uh, flower child, flower power type of thing, which is really interesting. Uh, but their music, you know, the music is not heavy at all. I mean, they have like little bits of hard rock and stuff. But if you like, um, you know, loads of keyboards and just that 70s sound, uh, they really kind of hit on it quite well. Uh, you know, this one starts off with a 13-minute long track uh, one more time, and that bleeds right into uh, Love is the Only Answer, which is 24 minutes. Then you also have The Sum of No Reason, 13 minutes, and then uh, Life in Motion, 12. The other couple tracks are shorter. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, where are we? Number nine, another one I do not own, but I've heard, I've reviewed, Banks of Eden from 2012. Very solid record. Very solid record. More kind of epic stuff on there, but very well produced. Very enjoyable. Seek that one out. Number nine, we're going to go with 2000 Space Revolver. Yeah, you know, I mean, I listen to this quite a bit. In fact, they, they played at Nearfest, Northeast Art Rock Festival, which was a long-standing festival here on the East Coast and had it in Pennsylvania and New Jersey for many, many years in a row. I attended the first eight of those, and I had the opportunity to see them play at the festival. I'm not sure if it was what the year. I don't remember what the year was, but uh, great. And I saw them a couple other times playing other other venues and things. Uh, you know, this has I Am the Sun. It's got Monster within it. It's a great, great tune. Uh, I Am the Sun, the second part. You got two parts here that total up to about 25 minutes in length. Uh, you got the Chicken Farmer song, Rumble Fish Twist. Lots of fun stuff on here. Very good album. And before I go, I will tell you the lineup for these uh, these albums here. All right, so next up, we're going to go last year's Waiting for Miracles, coming in at number seven. I really enjoyed this a lot last year. You know, I had kind of like, uh, you know, the band uh, were kind of like taking a little bit of a break. You know, Royna did some solo stuff. He was busy. You know, he's been doing Transatlantic and, you know, a couple other little projects and things like that. So he remains busy, but he put the band back together for this album. Uh, it's another double disc set. A lot of, lot of material on here, but very catchy. A lot of great harmonies. House of Cards, fantastic song. Miracles for America, Vertigo. Um, what else we got here? Spirals is a good tune. Black Flag. Ascending to the Stars, Wicked Old Symphony, good stuff. Unfortunately, my my favorite keyboard player from the band, Tomas Bowden, who's also a very cool dude, um, is no longer in the band. He does not appear on this album. And I remember originally I was kind of like really missing his keyboard playing, but the, the newer guy is actually very, very good. Got to give him props, so he's uh, doing a fine job. But uh, Tomas Bowden, I think, uh, also helped out a lot with songwriting. I think his presence is missed a little bit, but they're still doing very, very fine. All right, number six. Unfold the Future from 2002. Another double disc set jam-packed with stuff. <laughs> so much material. But, you know, this has one of my favorite Flower King songs on it, The Truth Will Set You Free. Uh, another bombastic, epic, 30-minute long track, but it's very, very good. Uh, Monkey Business is also quite cool. Uh, 
Silent Inferno, The Navigator. Some really good stuff on here. This is a very, very strong Flower Kings album. As is this one, more epic stuff. So if you're, if you're a prog fan and you like epic double disc, double album sets, 20 minute long songs, you've come to the right place here, guys. Uh, we're going to go with Flower Power from 1999. This is a good one. Again, more really epic length tracks. Uh, you know, The Garden of Dreams, another big mammoth tune, really good. Captain Capsnam, what else? Astral Dog. Stupid Girl, Corruption, Aggressive, really, really tasty Roy Nostalt guitar work on these albums. I, I, I got to say, he's an exceptional, exceptional guitar player. He's also a pretty good singer, too. He co-sings co here, lead vocals with uh, Hasse Froberg, who's a great singer. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is a, another really good one. But again, you know, a lot of material, a lot of material. All right, coming in at number four, we're going to go with their debut from 1995, Back in the World of Adventures. Fun album. I, th I think they got better after this, but this is still really, really strong. World of Adventures, the kickoff track is great. Uh, go West Judas, Oblivion Road, Theme for a Hero. A lot of strong tracks on here. A lot of old-time favorites for a lot of long-time fans. Coming in at number three, we're going to go with 1996's, their sophomore release, second album, Retropolis. Also, very strong. Very strong. Uh, Rhythm of Life. Kicking off a cool little instrumental that moves into the title track, Retropolis. Uh, Rhythm of the Sea. This is more to this world. The Judas Kissed, fantastic song, and Road Back Home. Some highlights from this album. Very, very good. All right, my number two. Going to go to 2001, The Rainmaker. Now, by this time, you should probably tell by the album cover, all right, the artwork here. They're, they're on Inside Out Records. A lot of the Inside Out Records releases have a certain kind of look to them. This is very typical of a lot of releases they were coming out uh, on the label throughout the 2000s. Uh, really strong album. Uh, and has another one of my favorite Flower King tunes, which they play live, and it's fantastic. Uh, Last Minute on Earth killer track you know if you want to maybe sample one song that you hear me talk about in this entire show that's the one to go check out all right fantastic song uh world without a heart road to sanctuary the title track city of angels is really good through the walls sword of god very strong stuff again and here you know you got some you got some epic stuff you know last minute on earth is 11 minutes road to sanctuary is 13 city of angels is 12 you know, you got uh, Serious Dreamers is eight. The rest are kind of short, three, four, five minute long. But again, you have to have some, you have to be really, really love prog rock and you have to love epic stuff, long tracks and all that sort of thing. If you don't, if you like catchy three, four minute tunes, this is not the place to come. Their songs are very catchy, but you know, you get, you get the drift here. All right, my favorite album, it's been my favorite album of theirs for a long, long time. 1997, Stardust We Are. I think for me, this is when it really, really came together. I think the band just was like firing on all cylinders from a creativity standpoint. Uh, the songwriting, the performance, just uh, here's where, you know, you get another double album set. And, uh, you know, In the Eyes of the World kicks it off. Another fantastic, definite like top 10 song from the Flower Kings. Uh, Church of Your Heart. Addictive Melodies. All right. Great playing. What else? Uh, the Man Who Walked With Kings, another fantastic song. Circus Brimstone, another concert staple, another favorite song of many, many people. Compassion, I always really love that song. Really good vocals on there from Mr. Stolt. Uh, Pipes of Peace, another cool little quick instrumental, but really good. Uh, the Merry-Go-Round, End of Innocence, and of course the epic, I actually got to see them play it live, the epic Stardust We Are, title track, 25 minutes and change, mind-blowing. This is, this is by far, I think, their best album. At least in 1997, right? So a long time ago, but quite, quite good. So let me uh, let me tell you just who is in the band here, so we can uh, get you familiar with all these guys. All right. So currently, you've got Roy Nestolt on guitar, vocals, keyboards, bass, all sorts of stuff. The mastermind of the band. You got Hasse Froberg, vocals, rhythm, guitar. Right? He's also been in the band since uh, day one. Uh, Jonas Reingold. 
bassist extraordinaire. He's done lots of other projects. You guys have probably heard him before. He's an excellent bass player. Uh, Zach Hammonds on keyboards. He's the new guy. All right, replaces Tomas Bowden. Uh, and then Mirko DeMaio on drums. He's also fairly new. And he replaced some, you know, get some guys who were in the band for a long time. Jamie or Jaime Salazar on drums. Fantastic player. He was in the band for a long, long time. Tomas Bowden, keyboards. All right. Michael Stolt was on bass for quite a bit. All right. Zoltan uh, Source on drums. He played there for quite a bit too. Danielle Gildenlow from uh, Pain of Salvation has done a lot of live work with the band over the years. All, right. All sorts of other guys have kind of been in and out of the band, but uh, those are some of the more notable folks. Right. So let me recap my list for you here. Uh, my favorite of all is uh, Stardust We Are. Number two, The Rainmaker. Number three, Retropolis. Number four, Back in the World of Adventures. Number five, Flower Power. Number six, Unfold the Future. Number seven, Waiting for Miracles. <clears throat> Number eight, Space Revolver. Number nine, Banks of Eden. Number ten, The Sum of No Evil. Ah, unsweet and iced tea, man. Nothing like it. Uh, number 11, Desolation Rose. Number 12, Paradox Hotel. And number 13, we're going to go with Adam and Eve. Uh, again, a very, very solid catalog full of enjoyable music. Like I said, if, you, uh, if you're only into metal, probably not going to dig these guys. If you like more short songs, pop stuff, these guys are going to be overwhelming for you. But if you love like classic progressive rock, if you love you know Yes and Genesis and ELP and all the bombastic stuff, man, I think you'll dig these guys. Uh, like I said, they've been around since the mid '90s, still going strong. A lot of great albums. If you wanted to, you know, my recommendation: if you wanted to sample like you know three of their albums, go the top three are fantastic. Stardust, We Are, The Rainmaker, and Retropolis. Start there, work your way down. Flower Power is a lot of fun too. Unfold the Future. There's a lot of great albums here, so check them out. This is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on the mighty YouTube all the damn time. What is coming up? Brian Slagle and Steve Keeler joining us yet again for more top ten songs metal with King Diamond. Okay, that's coming up later today. Uh, I'm going to try and squeeze in before then, or after it, or tomorrow morning. Uh, going to rank the albums of Hawkwind. However, uh, they have like, what, 30 albums? I think I have like 25 of them, 26. I don't even know. It's so many. Uh, it's just, I've decided, I think I'm going to rank, I'm going to do my top 15. All right? That's, I just, I'm having a hard time with coming to grips with how to do it. So I figure, you know what? I'm just gonna do the top fifteen because, like I said, I got like I got like twenty or twenty three of them, something like that. So I'm missing some. There's some I haven't heard, but you know, I think I have my fifteen favorites. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, also, hopefully tomorrow, ranking the studio albums of the Irish guitar legend Rory Gallagher. Jack Tolano is coming up for uh, an '80s radio hits show. Our favorite '80s radio hits, and. Uh, of course, we got 1971 tomorrow, right? Favorite album of the year, so you don't want to miss any of it. So stay tuned and have a good one, and we'll see you. Oh, you guys like my new Terry Katz shirt? Look at that bad boy, huh? Just got it. Anyway, have a good one, and we'll see you later on. Take care. Bye-bye.